The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of CIUT-FM. CIUT 89.5 Toronto. Welcome back to The Career Bud Show on CIUT 89.5 FM. I'm Nicole Hamilton. My next guest, Angel Torres, is a Colombian-Canadian photographer who's been phot- photographing for arts and business publications in Toronto while fearlessly and organically developing his portraiture, nature, and urban landscapes photography for over a decade. Wow. Angel joins me now live in studio. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Nicole. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Good <back>. morning. <laughs> just want to clear the throat just a little bit, right? Yes, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad to have you back because you've been here at CIUT with me live on air before, and we spoke mm-hmm. about your work, and it's just so lovely to have you back in studio. Thank you. I'm honored that for the invitation back. You're doing God's work. Oh, thank <laughs> so you. So it's wonderful that you support entrepreneurs and artists the way you do. Oh, so. well, I appreciate that. And I love entrepreneurs. And speaking of entrepreneurs, you are a great one because I've been seeing all of your photography and more online. You know, let's talk about your creative process Mm -hmm. and the types Mm -hmm. of of work that you do because we spoke about nature etc but tell us who in a few words who is angel torres me um i'm very passionate Mm, i'm at a really good place in my life now where i'm just um drawing and working from a place that is very free and uh, i've come to be uh, to a place that's very strong and uh, fearless and it uh, it uh, it gives me a lot of strength to move forward uh, creatively and uh, delve into new worlds uh, that I myself haven't uh, delved into before and uh, it's been really rewarding uh, delving there <laughs> going there because um, it's 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 its own reward um, so it's really beautiful, creative journey. Yeah, getting there. And you know, d- when you are working as uh, as a photographer, <clears throat> I, I would imagine everything inspires you. You know, as you're walking down the street, mm-hmm. you know, from nature to people. Do you have a favorite, you know, type or object or thing or embodiment that you prefer to photograph? Um, I'm very passionate now about people. I'm getting very much into portraiture. I love making people look good. That makes me feel good when I can make bring out the best in people and bring out their their personalities, their individuality, uh, because we are all individuals and unique, and that's beautiful. Um, society sort of unconsciously teaches us to to hide a lot of that, but it's beautiful to bring that out in people and make them teach them to own it because that is our gift to the world right and i think that's so key too because you know when an individual is sitting in front of a photographer we want to feel safe Mm -hmm. with you Mm -hmm. and know that you know we can indeed be ourselves Mm -hmm. 
So very cool that you enjoy, you know, photographing people Mm -hmm. (laughs) the most. Mm -hmm. You know, when the last time that you were on the show, we were talking about some of the skills, sets, et cetera, that are necessary to be a successful photographer. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about cameras, because sometimes that's a hard choice for someone who's deciding to walk in the career path of being a photographer. What should they be looking for when they are purchasing that great camera? What do we need? I, I guess that can also vary depending on the artist and what they're looking to create. Um, I like to have, I don't like to be limited, so I like to have as many um, um, possibilities open as possible at all times. Uh, on top of photography, I also enjoy videography, for example. So the last camera I purchased is a top of the line camera, which also does great videography and uh, a lot on top of a lot of great um, photography features for uh, lighting and color and just uh, overall lens quality. Um, and uh, it just brings your work to great new, new, new levels, new heights. So looking for lens quality is something that we should definitely be looking for. Yes, right? absolutely, absolutely. Do you yes. have a certain uh, product name that you prefer to go with when you're purchasing <laughs> your camera items? I guess everyone has a preference, but me, I'm a Canon man. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, everyone has a preference out there. It's like Coca-Cola and Pepsi, <laughs> <laughs> Nikon and right. Canon, but I'm a Canon man. So, okay. Yes. Now, let's talk about skill sets, mm-hmm. right? In order to be a good photographer, what does one need? Hmm. I think I might be gifted with good eyes for color and unique vision for life. My eyes see a lot of nuances in life that others might not see. So this skill comes to me as a blessing to help with my work actually. And so it's uh, quite rewarding to capture uh, these details and nuances that uh, with the camera that often are <clears throat> overlooked uh, in everyday life. So what about things like attention to detail, uh, you know, being able to pull out of the picture things that, you know, perhaps maybe we might not have seen, you know. So, for example, I I, I was really impressed by uh, a lot of your photography, for example. A lot of times I see it and the sky, for example, is so brilliant. Um, is, is, is that something that you look for? How Are you looking to pull out the things in nature or to re- really to bring those things forward so that the p- images can be that much more impactful? Yes, absolutely. Nature is always the ultimate um, inspiration and muse for me and anyone really. Um, Because if you can incorporate nature into, for example, an advertising campaign, um, the the blue skies, the the green trees, um, the waters, all that is a primordial um, upgrade to an image and a visual and then therefore um, the experience that the person uh, interacts and absorbs with an image or the artwork. So it greatly um, adds a lot. So I always like to, um, if, uh, it, with uh, the technology, improve the, the aspects of nature, say with uh, detail or sharpness, bring out the sky a little more and uh, you know, the textures in rock or in water is always so beautiful. Ah, oh, all mm-hmm. right. Well, folks, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to The Career Buzz Show on CIUT 89.5 FM. I'm Nicole Hamilton, and I'm so pleased to be sitting here with Angel Torres, photographer, videographer extraordinaire. So tell us about what you have coming up, because you are constantly busy. I mean, your, your social media <laughs> when are you sleeping is what I want to know. Oh but talk goodness. to us about what you have coming up. Yes, good point. I'm up to 4 a.m. most nights. So it's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of hard work, blood, sweat, and tears for sure. And um, I'm very excited and thrilled about so many projects coming up in 2020 already. Um, we have lined up the, um, uh, the Havana 500 show with... Um, uh, in conjunction and collaboration with Tele Latino and Salsa in Toronto. <clears throat> and uh, so very excited. It's a, <clears throat> pardon me, an extension of um, my, my 
Havana uh, exhibit at the uh, Columbus Center in the summer. Uh, so we have that. Um, I'm working on another project. I'll sort of keep that low key. But I've discovered also the the wonderful world of funding for artists, which is uh, just open up opens up so many portals and realms of possibility. So Definitely. Very excited. Thank you so much to all of the wonderful arts councils that are, <laughs> oh, that are yes. doing their great work out mm -hmm. there and, and, you know, do fund a lot of what we do. Mm -hmm. yes. So if individuals want to find out more about these projects on how, where can they find you online? Um, perhaps where I'd have the, mo I have so much uh, social media. So it's also a lot of work maintaining a lot of that, obviously. But uh, perhaps where I keep the most information is on my Facebook uh, company page, which is um, a collaboration of my photography and my design and videography and everything all together. It's uh, on Facebook, and it's Archangel Design, no spaces, dot CA. Okay, excellent. Well, we're about to let you go, and we're going to be bringing in shortly uh, an individual that you work with quite a bit, Brian Torner of mm -hmm. the Continental mm -hmm. Dance Club in Mississauga. But mm -hmm. before we do let you go, a piece of advice that you would give to up-and-comers in photography, what, what words of wisdom would you give them? Work hard, don't give up, uh, trust your inner voice, and um, don't stop persevere persevere it's a tough town but you, know, you have to trust your your voice and your your choices so good yeah there's yes. room for all of us right <laughs> exactly so good <laughs> and hal thank you so much for joining me this morning thank such you, a pleasure Nicole. to have you it's a pleasure being back thank, thank you. you merry christmas thank you and to you as well thank you. feliz navidad and that was Angel Torres here with me live on the Career Buzz Show on CRUT 89.5 FM. We're going to take a break and be right back after this. Welcome back to the Career Buzz Show on CIUT 89.5 FM. I'm Nicole Hamilton. My next guest, Brian R. Torner, is a world champion trainer and choreographer, a 15-time world championship adjudicator, and champion ballroom dancer with an impressive history. Now catch this. Brian received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Can-Am Dance Sport Gala. Organizers and in 1998 danced at the Royal Albert Hall in London, England as a dual as a dual of the Giants contender with Brigitte Meyer and Ralph Le Pen. Yes. Yes. Good and morning. Again, there's so much more to talk yeah. about on your bio. Your bio as well is quite long. It is. Please it's help too me. Much. In. I think I, I think I want to just scrap everything before 50 and and I feel like I'm 
starting all over you're again. starting all over well i love it well help me welcome brian torter to the show thank you so much Nicole so Hamilton. nice to see you again and just like <laughs> angel you've been here with me on ciut yes but let's talk about you know how you begun because your your story is quite interesting and you have family members in dance as well yes where did this begin for you this journey in dance my parents actually met at a dance at a public social dance in hamburg germany where they both lived uh, after the war. And um, yes, well, my father asked my mom for a dance. And, uh, it, you know, ballroom dancing in Europe was maybe maybe more formalized and a way of, um, of learning how to behave uh, in public, also how to behave when asking the opposite sex to dance. Uh, today we can ask the same sex to dance and transgender so it's a very different world but it was quite formal I just remember that my parents tell me that little bit they didn't they couldn't tell me what dance they danced to but they did say that all of the uh, girls told my mom stay away from him he's a player oh, oh my but he did write my mom a letter every day for two years because she actually right after that about a month after decided to move to canada not knowing the language not having family not having gainful employment and i just don't know how she did but my mom is and my dad are my heroes they really managed to uh from nothing they came together after two years they married um, and they just, um, their success formula is so difficult, it is that they are privately and in business together. They build a business, and it's sort of like uh, one is uh, does the accounting, and the other does the steps after the accounting process, the chartered accountancy process, and they've had a practice for the last 55 years. It's incredible, and they're still going to work every day because we have a unique marriage of two businesses um, out where we work, and that's the Continental Dance Club in Mississauga, 3141 Warden Way, and that's a public accountancy practice and a dance business, which wow. stays preserved because my family's businesses serve to preserve it. But now I'm, I'm so busy and things are coming like they're dropping from heaven. I'm not kidding, Nicole. So since last year, so many wonderful things have happened. Yeah, you're I miss busy. Talking, I miss talking to you. Oh, well, you know, I love having you here at, at CIUT. And you are so busy because there's so much <laughs> that is going on at the Continental. Talk to us about what you have coming up. I'm so glad that you asked me this question because I cannot believe it. But just just coming up in the very near future, this Sunday, for example, we have a Christmas potluck. So rather than make an expensive event and hire a dance couple and DJ and so on, actually everyone has offered their services for free and it's a potluck. So we have a chance also for those students and ins instructors and team partners that are already working with the Continental to learn of the new people. And in the new year, we've got incredible people coming. Toronto Tango Marathon happens to be uh, a dance school in Toronto that specializes in Argentine tango, runs two off-site events a year. It's also my former dance partner, Elizabeth Sadowska. She's coming back to the Continental. So the venue, the Continental, is really becoming more attractive for outside events. And I didn't pursue this. What else is happening? In February, we have uh, Bachata Noche Wednesdays from 7 until 11. You can dance your butt off. And it's wonderful because it starts with about a half an hour free class. And that's also something that just dropped out of heaven to me. I didn't go pursuing it. I wasn't advertising for it. Um, I probably will go with my family on hell should know this is a surprise Christmas <laughs> present. Our, f our, our guest right yes. before you, this is a surprise. That's okay, right. all right. We are going to go to an event run by the National Dance Council of Canada President, Miriam Pearson. She's like Queen Bee of Canada. I love her. Mary Pearson, <laughs> La Classique du Québec. It's also wonderful to dance in Quebec. Besides that, what else? Well, I think that's a Lots. fantastic surprise, oh, but I hate to... I'm exhausted to, already. I hate to burst your bubble. Angel yes. is going to know not only because we're broadcasting across Canada right now, but also because he's standing on the other side of the I studio. I know, well... <laughs> outside of this glass right so hopefully if our speakers are not on he's not going to hear but uh gotta tell you the speakers Honest, are on he's honestly, heard every word unheld deserves 
<laughs> a, a lot of treats because he works so hard above and beyond to help this brand of the Continental, which is quite unique. It's not just about dance. It's about photography. It's about we have a 73-year-old maestro of music who just called me up out of the blue last year after well, I believe interview. it's John Loomis, John correct? Loomis? Yes. And he is teaching me and Elizabeth Sadowska music on Thursday. So he's actually coming out of retirement and he's doing the notes for the MSO, Mississauga Symphony Orchestra, <laughs> who are coming in to rehearse La Traviata in my studio all of January. I mean, this is breathtaking yeah, stuff. There's so much oh, that's going on and, and you know, I think oh. for people who have, I mean, who hasn't but for, for anyone who hasn't heard about Continental, what disciplines of movement do you practice and teach there? Because, you know, we, we really want to make sure that individuals know, hey, this is where I've got to go, for example, for tango. What disciplines yes. of movement are offered? So uh, besides the tango marathon, one can also, we, we are, we have, if we have inquiries regarding tango, for example, we do have exponents different levels in our school who can teach that. So if you go to the continentaldanceclub.com forward slash about, you'll see a list of people, specialists, instructors, connected to dance, but also photography. Dance also, though, in many different sensibilities and genres, as a healing art, chakra dance. Um, I was approached last year to be third exponent of a chakra dance and sound healing and a caping sort of experience. Uh, what else? Serbian folk dancing. We have a huge group, 2,200 dancers, 11 troops. They have been with us since the beginning, and they are internationally renowned. They're fantastic folk dancing troupe. So, Amazing. So much, so much that's going on. And, you know, I feel like, you know, to uh, sit down with you needs to be an hour because there's so much <laughs> that's going on in your company. And, you know, we have just a couple of minutes left to, just yes. to spend time with you this morning. But I'm curious to know, as are our listeners, because we had a, a couple of individuals who wrote in once they knew that you were going to be on the show. Yes. As, as a working you know, somebody who has operated as a teacher, a dancer, adjudicator, and so much more within the dance field. What have you found, what has been one of the most, the biggest highlights of your career? I have so, so many highlights in my competitive dance career, but, but I must say, pardon me, <clears throat> that in recent memory, an incredible highlight for me has been that I met on Hal Torres because he has just opened my eyes to believing that I can become something in my middle age. I'm 55 years old. I feel like I'm about hmm, 28. I'm getting fitter. Um, he, he pushes me. He pushes us. We push each other and we inspire each other. It's a really good working team. We also need some time apart because, you know, us too much energy sometimes is just we need to calm down. <laughs> You know? <laughs> yeah, you, you both definitely are a ball of energy for sure. Um, and as we start to close, thank you for sharing what you have coming up uh, so at much. the Continental. Yes. But I asked uh, my previous guest on Hell as well, give us some, some last words of wisdom as we close for dance artists out there or individuals who want to work uh, within adjudication, etc. Words of wisdom. So it's important to believe in yourself. It's also important to surround yourself with people who you aspire to work with and don't be afraid. Don't think that you um, know it all. Make sure that you look for all the different angles that you are um, interested in what you do. You're passionate about it. You look at it from all angles and you don't be afraid to look for help and also volunteer your time. Find out what it's like to actually help others or be a mentor. As an older person, I'd like to do that for younger people. It's not always about the money. Oh. Quite often it's about what can you do, what can, what can you say, how do you approach everything in life, even a Facebook post or an answer. You know, you want to be encouraging, you want to leave this world a better place than you than it was before you were there. Oh, so good. Well yeah. said. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining me on thank the show so this much. morning. Always a pleasure. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's over with too fast. Too fast. I love it here. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Brian. Such thank a you pleasure for to have me. you. Thank that you. was Brian Zorner of the Continental Dance Club. And I want to thank all of my guests this morning. Angel Torres was in the house this morning as well. Renee Winter. 
If you want to find out more about our show, you can visit careercycles.ca. Follow us and follow me, actually, on Twitter and underscore Hamilton underscore. I can be found on Instagram as well. So again, make sure and tune in next week and every week for much more of Career Buzz. Thanks for listening. That's it for now.